Good afternoon. I also second the thanks to George and to, uh, to, to the George Palestine Studies for organizing this panel. And I look forward to the uh, discussion. Now, as always, I will have to uh, question the premise of this uh, panel. And I don't think that the so-called crisis of representation is what we are facing. I think this crisis is actually, at base, a crisis in politics, a crisis in the um, national identity. Thus, the main explanation for this crisis should not be sought in leadership or leaders, no matter how prominent they are, rather in what I call structural experience. So the concept of representation itself should not be understood as formal or uh, descriptive or procedural, rather it's implicated in the very substantive st struggles in the Palestinian uh, body politic, including the question whether we have a unified Palestinian body, uh, body politic and how it looks like and how it should be represented and what role of interest should this representation advance. Specifically, I argue that there is a struggle between two main uh, views of representation. This struggle pits the pragmatic integrationists, what I call pragmatic integrationists, against non-integrationists. And it's similar both inside the Palestinian community, inside Israel, and outside uh, Israel. The, in the West Bank, the Palestinian political map in general. The, these are similar forces, they have uh, similar interests, and they have formed cross green line alliances. So I will divide the presentation into five parts, brief parts. First, I will describe a movement from integration to collective organization within the Palestinian community science Then I will briefly, very briefly describe an opposite movement within the Palestinian community outside Israel. And then I will describe the commonalities between the two camps within these two communities. And then I will offer some ideas uh, of why what I call the project of integration is likely to fail. And then I will conclude with some thoughts about the effect they are spring and the effect of these movements generally on the idea of uh, on our understanding of so let me start with the Palestinian citizens uh, inside Israel. By integration, I don't mean assimilation, but rather a view of the advancement of the rights of the minority members through incorporation in the mainstream political and economic institutions. Conversely, non-integrationists call for empowering the community through autonomous or semi-autonomous political, economic, and educational uh, uh, structures. Integrationists focus on individual, individual rights, whereas non-integrationists focus on collective rights. Ideologically, there are three main political streams in the Palestinian community inside Israel. There are the nationalists, the communists, and the Islamists. And historically, we have we have we had a sizable number of the voters voting for Zionist parties. The dominant organized Palestinian political movement inside Israel. Specifically, the Israeli Communist Party started with an emphasis on integration and equal rights. The Communist Party was the only party allowed to uh, operate within the community and it claimed to represent both Jews and Arabs, uh, specifically uh, workers. And it continues to send representatives to the main uh, workers' uh, institution uh, in, the, uh, in Israel. The there were satellite uh, electoral uh, lists that were affiliated with the ruling uh, party, the uh, Mopai, and these satellite uh, lists got most of the votes during the 50s and 60s, and their representatives uh, wanted merely integration without equal rights. After the end of the political government in 1966, the constraints on movement and political organization were eased, and this coincided with the aftermath of 1965. Uh, a split in the Communist Party between, uh, so the Zionist wing of the Communist Party uh, left the party and therefore the party moved towards a more nationalist uh, rhetoric uh, and position, uh, leading the party leading the party to form a new list in the mid of the 70s uh, called Jabhat, 
in order to appeal to a wider uh, electoral uh, base that is not necessarily uh, communist. Consequently, the political map in, in South Asian communities has uh, moved steadily, steadily since the second half of the 70s to the world's uh, establishment and the land day, land day towards establishing collective institutions that are uh, based on unity of interest, such as the students' unions and the follow-up uh, committee, which is an umbrella group, an umbrella group for the uh, Arab community. Then we saw the emergence of a party based on identity vote, but without a project of collective organization. It's called the Arab Democratic Party. So only in the second half of the 90s, when uh, the National Democratic Assembly, uh, headed by Azmat Shara, was formed, would we see parties that are based on identity vote, but also have the project of collective organization and take the idea of collective rights seriously. Uh, the National Democratic Assembly, the NDA, made the notion of cultural autonomy and collective rights prominent in the agenda of the community. The formation of the NDA was, at least in part, a response to integrationism gone wild in the aftermath of the Oslo Accords, in which tens, tens of thousands of Palestinian citizens had registered as uh, members in Zionist parties, and the sentiment that the NDA, NDA was fighting is that the PLO has formally disengaged from the Palestinian citizens in Israel, and therefore their fate is within the, uh, the Israeli political community, and therefore they should look for integration in Israeli society. <coughs> so the NDA was a counter movement. In a parallel fashion, the internal uh, struggle within the Islamic movement led also to a split. The more pragmatic fashion, fa faction decided to go to the elections in the uh, 1936. And Nari Salah, uh, leading the other faction, developed what he called the self-sufficient uh, community, al Mujtama al-Mussani, an agenda for the community to develop its own institutions and provide its members the services that the state is declining to provide. So the struggle remains between two, these two political and ideological orientations. On the one hand, to foster a national identity as a way to equal rights. On the other hand, to pursue integration also to achieve equal rights in their view. The integrationist camp rejects the formation of meaningful, collective, representative national institutions that can compete with parliamentary representation in the Knesset. The Raid Salah led extra parliamentary Islamic movement and the NDA have been pushing in recent and the last decade towards direct elections of the follow up uh, committee. Another demand that the NDA uh, raised is retaining control of the education system, which is separated from the, uh, the uh, Jewish education system in Israel as part of a project of cultural autonomy. Such demands, according to Al Jabha, would signal isolationism and a nationalist uh, agenda. For the same reason, and since their view of the political community is bounded by the uh, Israeli borders and the Israeli political system, they are against representation in the Palestinian National Council and the PLO. Now, in terms of uh, representation, as far as electoral uh, politics uh, go, the Palestinian citizens have moved, moved in recent years towards a decreasing turnout in parliamentary elections, given skepticism of the efficacy of political representation. And if Israel disqualifies the NDA in the coming elections, that might, that trend might uh, uh, intensify. Integrationists, on the other hand, have been uh, vehement opponents of the idea of boycotting the elections. Even in 2001, when the elections concerned the prime minister position between Ibn and Ariel Sharon in the aftermath of the October 2000 uh, killings of 13 demonstrators. Now, a parallel development to the general decline in Tenor is the decline in the phenomenon in voting to uh, Zionist parties. Uh, this was in part due to the change in the mid-90s 
in the political system in Israel in which we moved to a split vote. That is, you can vote to a political party and to a uh, prime minister at the same time. But it continued even when this uh, uh, electoral system was reversed and we got back to uh, a unified uh, system. Now, the inflation in the NGOs sector during the 1990s and onwards is part of a, a sim the, the same symptom, uh, uh, which is the decline uh, of faith in uh, organized uh, politics. Now, this is also similar to the uh, incorporation of many former left activists in the West Bank and in Gaza in NGOs. And in both cases, the NGO sector started claiming that it can be a substitute for uh, political parties and maybe more effective, and that it, it is also Representative. Let me move now to the Palestinians outside Israel. Here, the political evolution mirrors the developments that I just described. They moved in an opposite direction from building collective national organizations in defiance of Israeli control to integrating these very institutions in the Israeli matrix of control. These institutions have moved from an anti-colonial slogan to one state slogan to a two-state agenda. In the move to two-state agenda, they relinquished any claim of incorporating the Palestinian citizens in the uh, Palestinian body quality and marginalized the original base, which is the refugees. Palestinian decision-making moved from the outside to the inside of the West Bank and Gaza Strip. And thus, this move, which accompanied the decay of the Pinato, undermined the representative claim of these institutions with respect to the refugees. In any case, other members of the uh, political uh, Palestinian public made an opposite move by endorsing a one state agenda, and therefore, we see this contestation between these two visions. But more important, within the move to the uh, two state paradigm, we have seen a more emphasis on state building, not through challenging the uh, structure of asymmetrical power between the two uh, countries, but through economic development and institution building within these very structures of power. This, this view is uh, generally associated with uh, Prime Minister Sonofaya. Let me now move to mentioning the uh, three main commonalities between integrationists inside and outside Israel. First, supporting the two-state solution. While the forces in the dominant institutions are asserted that they are committed to a two-state solution, they are integrating these very institutions into Israeli governance as they are committed to security arrangements and economic agreements. It is no wonder that the forces inside the Palestinian community, uh, inside Israel, are aligned with and supportive of the PA's agenda for two state, mainly, namely the agenda, because they are committed to integration with, with Israel. In a sense, they are both integrationists, even though they both speak the language of national identity. Whereas the nationalists and some of the Islamists inside Israel are more critical of the PA and more supportive of uh, the political positions uh, advanced by Hamas in recent years. Now, a second interesting connection is that the integ integrations in both sides are against what is viewed as radical positions. The PA leadership is against the Tel Father and pays only lip service to non violent resistance. El Jabha, on the other hand, is generally against the idea of a general strike within the Palestinian community inside Israel in occasions like the land day or the October 2000 anniversary. So they both reject any attempt to escalating uh, uh, and challenging the status quo uh, more profoundly. A third commonality is that both integrationist uh, camps reject political unity. Inside Israel, the Jabha refused thus far to form a united Arab list for the Knesset elections. Uh, and this is similar to the Fatah and the PA in the West Bank and Gaza Strip who resisted after the 2006 elections 
uh, both the inclusion of Islamic uh, organizations like Hamas in the PLO security committee and forming uh, uh, a, a government, a unity government with uh, Hamas. And therefore, we have a division between Israel and Iran. Now, the underlying motives for these disunity moves are simple deep distrust and profound disagreement with Islamists, refusing to share power, and rejecting the nationalist agenda. The effect on the political scene in both cases is simple. It is no wonder that the current PA leadership is supportive of the internal integrationists like al Jaha and the Islamist-led United Arab Emirates. And according to some reports, this support includes financial assistance especially during electoral campaigns to the Knesset. This PA leadership is the same pragmatic wing in the uh, in Fatah and the PLO that started the secret talks with left-wing Zionists uh, in the second half of the uh, 70s and onward, and at times called for the Palestinians inside Israel to vote for left-wing Zionist talks in order to enhance the chances of the left to win the elections and therefore there will be negotiations. Now, why is this project of integration likely to fail? So my point is that there's a struggle between two camps within the Palestinian community, uh, the larger community, you know, the larger political map, whether inside or outside. They are the same forces with the same interests and the same agendas, and they are forming cross alliances. The decline of the left inside Israel leads the integrationists, perhaps paradoxically, to further emphasize their integrationism by claiming that they are the main representatives of the left for both Jews and Arabs. The decline of the organized left in the Palestinian uh, diaspora and the West Bank in Gaza also leads to the domination of centrist parties like Fatah and uh, the PA and their integrationist approach. Even Hamas, by participating in and winning the 2006 elections, succumbed to the integrationist pressure. It failed not because it didn't want to, but because Israel didn't want to, and because the integrationist project is elusive, given the fact that Israel accepts only one form of integration, which is subordination to a separate and unequal state. It takes the shape of ghettos, inside Israel and Pantustans inside the Palestinian in the West Bank. The Palestinians inside Israel are 80% of the population, but they are more than 50% of the criminal prisoners. They are more than 67% of the murder suspects, and they are 70% of the attempted murder suspects. In addition to this rise in organized crime, poverty is rampant. 65.8% of the Palestinian children inside Israel in 2011, uh, 10, were poor. Arab schools, which are separated from the Jewish education system, are also in bad shape. Only 32% graduate with a matriculation certificate that will uh, make them eligible to higher education. The rate of Arab women employment in Israel is lower than the rate of Arab women employment in Saudi Arabia. The Arab communities are ghettos because they are racially segregated communities. They are overcrowded with welfare-dependent citizens who study in poor schools and suffer from high levels of crime and organized crime. The Pantustans in the West Bank and Gaza, the also process produced, are similar. Racially segregated, economically dependent, uh, politically weak, and in many ways, lawless communities. Now, the very reason that dooms the integrationist approach in the West Bank and Gaza dooms it also inside Israel. The relentless pragmatism of the PA leadership at a time that the Israeli political map has dramatically shifted to the right meant an increasing compromise of rights. And this exposed the failure of the Oslo's logic. Why would Israel cut a deal now? if the Palestinians would be weaker more. Also Hamas, perhaps unintentionally, brought the integrationist project into its logical end 
and fear because its pragmatic impulse has led it astray. The Islamic movement inside Israel had done this, the same strategic, strategic choice but 10 years earlier. It decided in 1996 to run for the basic elections and the pragmatists won that internal debate, leading, as I said, a split in the movement. And then political and electoral considerations led the movement to dilute its Islamist identity by forming an alliance with non-religious pragmatic forces such as the previously mentioned the Arab Democratic Party. Those who rejected integration, like Raad Salah and Ahmed Shara, were prosecuted. But it is the NDA that, like Hamas, brought the logic of integration to its logical contradiction when it is based on inequality. Pragmatic integrationists inside Israel have failed because the process of ghettoization has undermined the integrationist approach. Collective processes are hardly challenged by individual demands to citizenship. Let me conclude with a few thoughts. The Arab Spring, unfortunately, did not affect substantially in either the Palestinian political map in the West Bank and Gaza or the Palestinian political map inside Israel. In fact, Al Jabha inside Israel saw, saw itself as part of the social mobilization in the Jewish uh, street uh, in Israel in the summer of 2011, which faded away rather quickly. And this is again a manifestation of the integrationist uh, impulse that reduces the issues to primarily socioeconomic questions that are shared supposedly by all citizens, whether Arab or Jews. The NDA and the Islamist movement, Islamic movement did not show the same excitement to the Israeli social mobilization. Similarly, the self mobilization that we witnessed in the West Bank focused entirely on the economic issues and failed to mention the political issues. And this reductionism showed that the protesters, while supposedly protesting against Prime Minister Fayyad and his policies, they actually accepted his premise by focusing on the economic issues and institution building within the existing political structures. And this is reflected in his slogan, Vidna Naish, We Want to Live. In both cases, inside Israel and outside Israel, the Palestinians uh, did not uh, have any change in the leadership uh, through the emergence of new and young uh, leaders uh, within the established political parties and institutions. Now, what does this tell us about representation? Both sides of this struggle are represented they represented different interests, different visions of the uh, political community and national identity, and different segments of the elites and the public. And the struggle between these two camps will determine the course of Palestinian history in the coming years. The attempt to organize the Palestinian political movement or party politic inside or outside Israel will be shaped by this struggle. The integrationist camp is hostile to this project of reorganization because it undermines its vested interests in the process of integration. Thank you.